It's Mazzy here, and people ask me a lot, what am I using for record storage? What are those shelves? When I do my whack-a-moles, when I do my It's the Music Stupid videos in my record library, what are those? Those aren't calyx, are they? They are not. In fact, those are IKEA shelves. They're called Bondi, B-O-N-D-E. Unfortunately, IKEA discontinued them about 10 years ago, and I bought a bunch of them that I had um, in my um, library at home back in San Francisco, and I wish they kind of continued those. They had different colors. Uh, mine is that, uh, I kind of wish I got white at the time, but different look, different times, so be it. But I like it, they have backs. They're a little higher than the calyx. You don't stack them in the same way. They look more finished. You can buy doors if you want. I have doors, but all the doors I'm not using uh, anymore. I used to have them for my, my as for books way back in the day. So Bondi, B-O-N-D-E, maybe you can find them used uh, through Craigslist or somewhere where you live. I happen to be standing out in front of Ikea here, just uh, south of Seattle. And I'm going in on a Sunday morning when they open at nine, quiet time. Uh, I need some lights for these bookcases. I just rearranged my Beetle books, which you're gonna see in a minute. But anyway, I just wanted to share that about uh, my record storage shelves. Unfortunately, they're no longer available. They do have a more finished look than the uh, Calyx, which are a great deal. I think, you know, the best bang for your buck in terms of record storage are the Calyx. Uh, shelves and various colors and configurations. So um, I'll see you on the other side of this. Hello, it's Mazze. Adonde es el biblioteca? Right here, aquí. Uh, this is a part of my uh, new Beetle library. Over the last few days, uh, my son Joseph, if you saw that whack-a-mole uh, generations, Joseph was here and he helped me put together these Billy bookcases, Ikea. More landfill, right? <laughs> I, think, I think they sell something like uh, a one Billy bookcase ever, every 37 seconds somewhere in the world. Um, I'm not sure if the Calyx uh, is close behind for you record geeks, but... Um, Anyway, this is a, a room upstairs that was used for uh, the archivist had an office here and I have my my uh, video library. I'm facing it right here. Those of you who may have seen it before. I'll show that another time, but I still have a lot of my Beetle books downstairs. Now, I have a pretty massive Beetle book collection. And the first thing some of you are going to ask have you read all those books? I've read about 75% of my collection. There's some that you just can't read literally for a lot of reasons. Uh, there's, um, maybe what I'll do is I'll, sh I'll show certain books. I'll share them. But uh, I have an extensive uh, uh, Genesis book collection, limited edition books that are usually signed by various uh, of the photographers, writers, in fact, George and George Harrison and uh, Ringo Starr and Yoko Ono have uh, books signed, uh, books that they put out on Genesis. George Harrison was the first with I Me Mine uh, back in 1980, I believe, 80, 81, 80. Uh, anyway, uh, put these together. Uh, these are uh, lights from Ikea, which kind of give a nice ambiance, uh, uh, especially at nighttime. It's just that mood lighting, which is really nice. They are not organized by ISBN number, no, no Dewey decimal system here. Anyway, this is the, the collection. So I'm gonna kind of just pass through it a little bit so you can kind of see it, but it's kind of nice to get things organized. And I, there's a little uh, little seating here I have there. So uh, it's nice to kind of take a little break and peruse through these books occasionally. So probably one of the first books that a lot of people may remember of a certain age was this, uh, 1968 Hunter Davis uh, or Hunter Davies book. I guess he does Davies, not like Ray Davis. Uh, auto authorized biography had help with um, from Brian and Derek Taylor and then various editions of it. You know, that was a later edition, uh, different cover, another revised, you know, revised, revised, another revised. And this one's sort of an illustrated uh, 
version of it, uh, semi more illustrated. Um, this is sort of an early one too, the real story, Julius Fast. And there was a visual one, of course, the Beatles book with the great uh, 1967 photographs by Richard Avedon. Um, I quite like the Norman Phillips, excuse me, the Philip Norman book, Shout. I do have a signed copy. I met him uh, when this came out. So there, he did Shout. There's a revised edition, obviously. He did uh, this one, The Road Goes On Forever. Of course, this is the behemoth, uh, the Mark uh, Lewison book, uh, Tune In. The American one was shortened. This is volume one. Literally, how long ago was this? Was this like eight years ago already? Maybe more? I don't even know. But anyway, he's working on it. That's the uh, big uh, UK edition. Um, okay, we'll go down here. McCartney. Uh, there's a Philip Norman did a Paul McCartney book. Now, this is a lovely book. Um, I like this book. And this is sort of an authorized one. Oh, see, there we go. Uh, autographed by Barry Miles and Gordon Waller. Gordon Waller, of course, Peter and Gordon. He autographed page 111, since I assume that's where he's mentioned in this book, Peter and Gordon. Uh, Barry Miles was a friend, associate of uh, McCartney. So this is actually really good. It, it really, it, it's the closest we have to an autobiography. It's not an autobiography, but it's a biography with uh, McCartney uh, was involved in it. You know, he keeps saying, hey, I was in the guard. It wasn't John. It was me first. And he's actually right, actually. Uh, I love the graphics on this. Sometimes just graphics. Look at that fab. Uh, this is the intimate, intimate life of Paul McCartney by Howard Sounces. Uh, more, more, more. Ray Coleman's written uh, several Beatle books. Uh, this is um, another uh, limited edition of Ray Coleman's book. A Man on the Run is actually a pretty good book um, by Tom Doyle. Uh, solo years. Uh, okay, Perian Press in this rock and roll series. Uh, this is uh, Turn Me On Dead Men, The Complete Story of the Death Hoax. Uh, okay, paperback. I, pay, I usually get paperback versions as well. Chet Flippo wrote, wrote a decent one on McCartney. Um, Chet Flippo was a Rolling Stone writer, of course. Um, we won't talk about this guy. He's kind of a wanko, wanker. But Alex Cozen and Adrian Sinclair. This is the first of several volumes. Alan Great writer, has written some things. I think he, he wrote for the New York Times and uh, various publications. He do, he works on the Beatle. Um, there's the Beatle podcast that he's a member of. Good writer, really good writer. Um, and then we get into, oh, this is nice. This is Blackbird singing uh, his McCartney's poetry book. This is signed by Sir Paul McCartney and uh, regular editions of it. Oh, and you, oh all you need is love. Uh, excuse me, all in his ears. This is the first book, I believe, that uh, George Martin wrote, and I met him, signed it with his pen. It, it's, it is signed inside by George Martin. All you need is ears. Uh, now, this is a really good series. Uh, Kenneth Womack just wrote these a few years ago. I'd say, what, three, four years ago, maybe, give or take. Two volumes of the life of uh, Sir George Martin. I prefer, I think it's classier, the UK artwork. So I had a pick the UK artwork up. Um, that's the UK edition on that. Sometimes I do that. I don't do that all the time. I used to do it a lot more. I'm slowing down now. Making music. This is kind of a cool thing by George Martin too. George Martin's written a few things. Of course, Summer of Love, The Making of Sgt. Pepper. This is actually a good book. Soundman, Glenn Johns, who uh, worked on Let It Be, worked with the Stones, who loved Zeppelin. Or the first five Steve Miller albums, I guess. Another, uh, Story Abbey Road, another Kenneth Womack book. Uh, several books here on um, Abbey Road Studios. Life of the Dakota, this is actually about the building, Dakota Days, uh, the death of Lennon. We get into uh, Lennon letters, type of things like that. Let's go up here. Okay, this is a must. This is, um, there's several versions of this. Uh, John Wieners, he requisitioned uh, the Freedom of Information Act the FBI files of uh, John Lennon, and they're in here. We got the Philip Mor Norman, another book, a Ray Coleman on Lennon. Uh, Ray Coleman in the UK, it came out as two volumes, John Winston Lennon and John Ono Lennon. Oh, and Leibowitz is down there. Of course, we get several other books, Albert Goldman. Um, you know, there's controversy in, in certain books and everything, uh, which I'm not gonna get into in this. Uh, this is a great interview by David Sheff, uh, 
this to John Lennon Yoko. This was uh, the interview done for Playboy magazine the day John Lennon uh, died. <laughs> this is wild. John Lennon in heaven, I think this is the one, yeah. This is an interview with John Lennon after he died. So think about it. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, this is a good one. Robert Hilburn, L.A. Times critic. Cornflakes with John Lennon and other tales of the rock and roll life. Uh, we got we got relatives. We got you know Julia Baird, uh, step sister. We got uh, John Lennon called me normal. That's Hurricane Smith, uh, who was the engineer on their first half of the Beatles and obviously produced uh, some Pink Floyd, major Pink Floyd records. John Lennon letters. I said that. Okay, let's go down here. We got George Harrison. Now, I mean, mine first came out as a Genesis limited edition book. Some people were upset who bought that book, uh, that they were going to put out a consumer version for regular price. But I think it's great. And I have the rare edition, but that's always going to be the rare signed edition. Uh, this is a great, you know, autobiography in a way. Uh, this is a later issue of it. There are several, you know, it's been reissued over the years, like many books. The George Harrison, the whole series of things. George Harrison. Uh, Ringo Starr, I love the name of this. Ringo Starr, straight man or joker. Uh, Ringo obviously hasn't had a lot of uh, biographies written about him. This is cool, though. This is Finding the Fourth Beatle, untold story of 20, uh, 23 drummers who put the beat in the Beatles. About more drumming. Shit. <laughs> Sorry. This is a cool book, too. A Ringo Starr and the Beatles beat about the drumming side of it. They, they concentrate more on that than his life, which is unfortunate. In the 70s and 80s, Perian Press, they did these library volumes. And this is every bound of a uh, version of Beatle Fan Magazine, which was a fanzine that came out. And these are bound copies of it. Somewhere in here, there's a review of our book, The Beatles England. This is stereoscopic. 3D beetle thing. So you have, I gotta look, you gotta see this. This has stereoscopic lenses. It's a limited edition. It has his book talking about the edition. And of course, these images that you you go through. It's like the remember the old view masters? It's basically like the old view view masters, and you see it kind of in this. Uh, stereoscopic 3D thing. Really kind of a fun uh, project signed by the um, the makers, the inventors. Something kind of a little fun thing. This goes back to the 1970s, the Lennon Factor. I love this cover, how minimalism uh, that is. Some Japanese it's a photographer, photographs of Nishi uh, Samaru, uh, taken uh, of John, Yoko, and Sean in the um, late 70s, obviously around 1979, 1980, I guess. Uh, okay, here we go. This is a cool book. Uh, this is photographs of, that May Peng and John Lennon took together during their, uh, their time together, their uh, lost weekend year. I have a signed copy of that. I have a lot of signed copies. Another John Lennon FBI files, a different version, different author, different contributor. Um, this is just a nice photo essay of Strawberry Fields that Yoko put together, that Yoko sort of sponsored in um, right in Central Park off of West 72nd Street adjacent to the Dakota. This is a brick from Men Love Avenue, Mendip. That's where John uh, lived with Aunt Mimi. Very close to where, to where his mother died. Of course, there's the uh, projects that John did, wrote on his own, in his own right. Spainer in the works and various different editions of that. Uh, there's London Remembers. Great interview that Jan Wenner did for Rolling Stone. But then without John's permission, he published it in the book. And John really didn't like that. So a lot of other books here. Just various books like, oh, God, so many. Oh, this is a must. There's various versions of this. Revolution in the Head, Ian MacDonald, one of the great views of the revolution about the music of the 1960s of the Beatles. And uh, really, really well written. Highly recommended. That's the original hardback, I believe. It's a later 
edition paperback. Fantastic book. That's one I highly recommend. Uh, this is one of those Kumbaya New AG Beetle Wave. Uh, sometimes they're self-published. Like this is the Beatles con concerted effort. A list of a bunch of their concerts. A listing. A lot of stuff one would argue has been outdated now because of the World Wide Web. But it's still kind of cool to see them. Now this is one I always tell people about. Dave Morrish, who wrote for Rolling Stone, wrote those record guides to Rolling Stone. Uh, rock and rap confidential uh, fanzine he did for years and I think he has still has a website. This is like an essay and this is the Beatles second album. He writes and his whole um, theme here is discussing the Beatles second album, the American configuration, how it's probably the best rock and roll album the Beatles ever did. And it's obviously a lot of covers. It's a it's a comp that Capitol put together after Meet the Beatles, and it has you know a lot of covers, obviously. Uh, but this is a fun read, and, and it makes the argument uh, like a thesis, in a way, about the Beatles' second album. I highly recommend that. Uh, the day John and, and Paul met. Of course, the longest cocktail party. I should have mentioned that up here. This is a, a fantastic book. Richard DeLello, who's considered the house hippie, wrote this, and it's just talks about Apple as a business and how everyone is walking out with shit. If you ever saw the Ruttles and people are walking out of the building, it's um, <laughs> basically that in real time. Longest cocktail party. Another edition of that. Uh, so there's so many. There's, there's a, it's never ending. Tony Bramwell, who worked for the Beatles. Uh, everybody wrote a book. Alistair Taylor, who worked for uh, Brian Epstein. Everyone who basically... You know, changed toilet paper. The Beatles' house wrote a book, including myself. I didn't write toilet paper. Uh, Sergeant Pepper 50. There's a lot of uh, books that came out around that time. This is really a nice book, too. The album, The Beatles. Uh, Brian Salval, uh, who wrote the Abbey Road book. It's a book on Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Um, these are the Perian Press archive books. Again, everything now on the web has probably made these obsolete, but they're still kind of cool. Uh, to have in the collection all together now, which was a, a early staple. Harry Castleman and uh, Walter Pedradzic. Walter is a great Beelologist, too. I met him over the years. Uh, just a great series. This is an interesting series. Jerry Hammock wrote on recording reference manuals. There's been so many of these recording. Uh, and down here, there are larger, obviously, oversized books. A lot of photography books. Uh, Peter Blake who a designer, an assemblage artist, who did the cover of Sgt. Pepper. He did the cover of um, Stanley Road. He did face dances uh, by The Who. Of course, Richard Avedon, the great photographer. We know that. But a lot of photo books. Norman Parkinson, who did a lot of great pictures of the Beatles. All my major uh, photograph uh, Beatle books, are most of them are downstairs including, you know, this is uh, yesterday, this is Astrid Kircher and Max Schiller, who wrote, took a lot of things of the Beatles. Of course, we got a fashion icon, Patty Boyd. You get the idea here, Beatles anthologies. And of course, David Nobel writes, Communism, Hypnotism, and the Beatles, a Christian crusade publication out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. How the Beatles corrupted, corrupted mankind, the youth. And Joseph Crow speaking, look at this flyer out of Oakland. Joseph Crow, rock and roll music, youth, drugs, and brainwashing, passing fad or formula for a revolution. And this was, a, this is an Oakland, Jesus. Does rock music encourage American youth to take drugs? Probably. Oakland, Alameda, Piedmont, at the Sailboat's house. <laughs> really? Of course, uh, David Nobel has another book, The Marxist Minstrels, a handbook on communist subversion of music about the author. Biblical studies. Okay, we, we won't go there. Enough of that. And, of course, uh, there's our book from 1982, The Beatles, England. 
uh, limited edition hardback, the British edition, there's a Japanese edition and our edition. And of course, uh, since then, there's been a lot of other Beatle travel books, but we were actually the first uh, travel book. Excellent, excellent. This, people want this repressed. This is recording the Beatles. This is an amazing, amazing volume. Hopefully it'll be um, reprinted at some point. Just an excellent book. If you're into gear and want to know the history of the consoles and the equipment uh, they worked on to make their uh, amazing records. Thanks for watching. Wouldn't kill you to read a book once in a while.